Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we are here for my 40 week bump date. <laughs> Alright, so 40 weeks. I did not think we would make it this far. I feel like I've been let on a little bit, but the little boy is doing really well and I have quite the flipping update for you guys. So let's hop on into what the heck's been going on. If you guys can't hear, I am suffering a cold. And Kaya is in the background of this video helping me record this bump date, right? Are you helping me? So she herself is just getting over a cold and um, actually it was like RSV um, and she has passed it on to me. I mean thankfully I don't have a cough, I just have like a really bad sinus headache and a lot of like sinus pressure, a um, little bit of a fever, my temp was like 99.6 I think um, just a couple minutes ago. So a little bit of a fever. So that's the first thing that's been going on. Second thing that's been going on is my induction was canceled. <laughs> you guys know that I was doing an elective induction this time around. It was something that my doctor and I had discussed beforehand. Just because of the events of Kaya's birth, we were choosing to do an elective induction this time. I seemed to be very favorable for an elective induction and it just did not happen the way we thought it would. My appointment before this one, um, baby boy was sitting at about a negative three station. I was two centimeters dilated. My doctor was hoping, um, he didn't say this, um, but now I know this. Um, I, I think he was hoping that baby boy would be more of like a negative two, negative one station um, by this appointment that I had last Friday. Um, unfortunately, you guys, he had floated back up. Um, I don't know if this is something that's common, but he went from a negative three all the way up to um, above a negative four. So um, pretty high up there. He seems to be very determined to stay in there. So because of him floating back up, we did have to cancel our plans for the induction. Um, what happens when the baby is that high and you plan an induction, um, especially since it was an elective induction and it wasn't something that was um, quite medically necessary yet. What can happen when, when the baby sits so high, I'm sure you guys know the terminology a little bit better than I do, but um, what can happen is the baby's cord can prolapse um, if my water were to break. Now, if it were to naturally break, that's a different story, but if we were to induce and we um, we caused this and we caused this prolapse, that would be a different story. If my water were to break and he's sitting so high, his cord could get caught underneath where his head is, and when he drops, he could land on his cord. Now, this would have, from what I understand, I'm no medical professional, um, but from what I understand, this would cause um, a dip in his heart rate, and it could um, eventually lead to an emergency C-section, or um, if baby was that high, there's a possibility that he just would not come down um, during the birthing process, during the laboring process, which that would elicit um, a C-section as well. Now, there is a third possibility that could happen. He is so high at this point that my doctor is worried that he might even flip breech. Um, he is floating quite high, you guys. Now, I'm hoping he won't do that. He did mention, because um, he has kind of floated a little bit higher this whole time, but he finally had dropped down to a negative three, so my doctor was thinking, you know, maybe he's making his way down. Unfortunately, not the case, but he, again, um, in my earlier weeks, like 36, 37 weeks, said he was floating pretty high, kind of up in my hip, and that we did have a possibility for him to flip breech. Um, so it wasn't news to me that this was a possibility. Now, crossing my fingers that he has since engaged, um, a little bit more at least, I have another appointment this Friday at 8 a.m., which I plan to sit down that night for you guys because I know at the end of pregnancy, things can happen really quickly and I wanna record updates for you as well as for myself so I don't forget any of the really important things that happened um, towards the end here. Where do we go from here? Now, my next appointment is this Friday at 8 a.m. and if he still 
hasn't moved down, we will start having to talk about um, our options at that point. Fingers crossed that baby boy doesn't do any crazy flipping um, inside the womb, that he isn't breech, and that he still is head down, but if he is still too high head down, um, yeah, then we'll have to start talking about what our induction um, options are at that point because they can't let baby um, stay in past 42 weeks. So um, at that point, it does become medically necessary to get him out one way or another. Unfortunately, what that would probably lean towards if he is still so high is um, a cesarean section, which is not um, what I'm going for. But um, by all means, if that is what baby and I need to uh, come out healthy and happy in the end, great. Um, I, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I probably cried for a good six hours after my appointment. I cried the entire next morning. <sighs> now, the reason why I cried so much is because I have been up every single night since last Tuesday or Wednesday with the most excruciating back pain. In fact, I had to start my maternity leave early because I thought it was the real deal. Um, I've been in false labor for almost, let's see, on and off each night for like the past week um there's been there's some nights that are better than others um last night i didn't really have any um back labor back pain or any contractions so essentially these contractions are were happening every four or five minutes um especially saturday night um and it's just not progressing me i'm not i'm not moving anywhere which means that it is false labor. I'm tired, I'm exhausted, I'm just ready to meet my baby, but at the same time, I'm not willing to um, sacrifice his health um, just because I'm uncomfortable and a little bit miserable myself um, and missing a few nights sleep, so <laughs> it'll be okay. So yeah, again, I cried just because out of like sheer exhaustion, um, and disappointment too. I mean, I had been really like mentally prepared. I was ready to go. I cleaned my entire house. My bags were packed. Um, Kai's bags were packed. Mike's bags were packed. Everything was ready to go. Laundry was done. So ha like thinking of having to redo all of that in a week and a half, two weeks was, was daunting as well as thinking about, sorry, Mike's like doing stuff in the garage in the background. So um, it's a little noisy, but, um, but anyways, I'm thinking of having to re-clean all the dishes and thinking of, um, having to be pregnant for another two weeks and being swollen and gaining more weight. Um, it just was a big mental hurdle for me. And I know in retrospect, it's only a couple weeks, but, uh, towards the end of pregnancy, it can be just a little tough. Um, yeah just emotional. I just cried. Um, I'm sorry if this is all over the place. There's just so many things that have happened. Okay, so Friday, um, I find out that my induction has been um, postponed slash canceled um, after I had been up the past few nights with this false labor. Um, and at that appointment, I hadn't progressed anymore either. I was still at a two, um, but my cervix was very soft, very ripe, ready to go. Essentially, as soon as my body was, uh, as soon as baby were to drop, that would be go time. But we've been saying that for quite a few weeks. So, so no progress was made. Um, just saying that my cervix was really ready um, to go into labor as soon as baby is ready. Um, and then I had a couple more nights of this false labor. Kaya got sick on Wednesday, last Wednesday, all the way up through yesterday, so Sunday. She finally got, got over this illness. Um, and then last night is when I started to get this cold. And I was up most of the night tossing and turning because I couldn't get comfortable, but also because I couldn't breathe. I had a really bad sinus headache. Um, it was really congested from that cold. Um, and then this morning, so it has been terrible weather here in Minnesota where I live. It has been like blizzard conditions tomorrow with wind chill is supposed to be 65 degrees below zero. School's being canceled. Um, it's just not nice weather, you guys. So this morning I woke up and um, my husband goes to work at like five in the morning. 
So when he left this morning, there was only like four, five, six inches of snow on the driveway. Totally like would be able to drive through that with my car typically. But then the plows came by after he had left for work. So there was like a three and a half, four foot drift at the end of my driveway. There was no way that my little car was gonna make it through that. So I went out there and I was shoveling through this drift at the end of my driveway. And so here I am like hugely overdue, nine months pregnant, shoveling the snow at the end of the driveway so I can go to work. Um, <laughs> and I'm out there and I'm in my husband's tennis shoes because my I'm not gonna wear my wedge boots to go shovel and none of my other boots or shoes are fitting me right now because I'm so swollen so I'm wearing my husband's tennis shoes and I'm out there and I'm shoveling snow with like the worst shovel ever and it's not going anywhere like I can't even like push the snow it just was so heavy for me and then I fall flat spread eagle on my freaking belly like Boom, on the concrete, <laughs> smashed like a bug, super pathetic, um, and it hurt. <laughs> I felt so sorry for myself and I was embarrassed because all my neighbors were out. So I go inside and I know immediately that I'm gonna have to go and be monitored um, just to make sure that baby boy is okay. Now I knew immediately that he was fine because he was wiggling around like crazy after that because I landed right on him. And I must have like an amniotic sac of steel because my water did not break. You'd think something like that at like 40 weeks would break your water, but no. But I went in for most of the day today and was monitored. Again, baby boy it was looking really good on the screens. His heart rate was good. Um, my midwife was laughing. The midwife that was on staff today, she was like the on-call midwife, was laughing because his heart rate was like looking like her car in the morning. It was like and he was like going crazy. He was going ham in there. But I started to get really crampy and they weren't concerned about it because I wasn't bleeding and I'm hoping that maybe it was just a little swift kick in the bum to uh, get him to engage and, and drop a little. So I have been really uncomfortable. My pubic bone has felt like it's like separating. So I really think he's getting nice, deep and low. Um, I was lucky because my doctor was also on call at the hospital today. So, um, so I was able to see him <laughs> and um, we both kind of laughed. He asked the midwife first. Um, goes, oh, is Morgan here for a labor check? And, and the midwife goes, no, she was shoveling this morning and fell on her belly. And my doctor goes, oh yes, just trying to put herself into labor. Yeah, not exactly what I was trying to do, but um, it would have been a nice side effect. Um, so anyways, I was lucky. He was on call, so he came and he chatted with me um, and said, if I don't have a baby before Friday, he will see me Friday morning. And hopefully we will be doing a membrane sweep um, instead of having to talk about um, possible C-section and all the scary words. Yes, yeah, so that is best case scenario. If baby has dropped by Friday, we will be doing a membrane sweep. And then what I would assume would happen after that is we would be scheduling um, a normal induction um, for maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday after that. I personally think that I'm still gonna make it through the weekend just cause, I don't know. I just have a feeling I'm gonna go past the weekend. I like to overcook my chickens. So it has been very eventful. Counseled induction and sickness and um, falling on my belly this morning. Just, I'm done. It, it has been a heck of a week. I've been through the ringer. I am officially, officially, officially ready to have my body back, not um, be in pain anymore but everything happens for a reason. So if he hasn't come yet, it means that he's just not quite ready. That is going to wrap it up for this 40 week bump date. I will be uploading a fun video later this week um, of my postpartum meal prep. Now I did meal prep a ton of stuff um, yesterday, four meals, which actually broke down to eight um, containers, which is really nice. 
and I'm able to freeze those and then I can just reheat them in the microwave as I please once I come home from the hospital um, and get this baby weight loss kicked off. I'm so excited to share that journey with you guys. So stay tuned for the postpartum meal prep on <laughs> the postpartum meal prep on Thursday that's coming for you. And then I should have a bump day for you guys. Kai is getting more cereal. Oh my goodness. I should have a bump date up for you guys this weekend. I'm thinking Sunday. I do want to sit down and record um, as soon as I get home on Friday, as long as I'm feeling up to it. Um, and just kind of walk you guys through what happened, if I had a membrane sweep, or if we're having to wait, um, or if we're having to do the C-section plans, or, or what's going on. Um, send your positive labor vibes my way. <laughs> Say a little thought and prayer for me that this baby boy engages so that we don't have to take any drastic measures and move into a cesarean section instead of a vaginal delivery. Mama, watch <laughs> what? I'll watch Marina. Yep, we'll watch Vampirina in just a second. <laughs> Alright, you guys, well that is going to wrap it up for today's video, today's bump date. I hope you enjoyed this crazy update. Um yeah, if you like this type of video on my channel, you know the drill. Be sure to give me a big thumbs up. If you are new here, welcome. I'm Morgan and I do a lot of this kind of content on my channel. I have a three-year-old daughter, Kaya, and I have my baby boy who will hopefully be here any day now. So join my little family here on YouTube. I would love it. Leave a comment down below, you guys. Give me some inspiration to make it through the rest of this pregnancy. Share your stories with me, your labor stories. I'd love to hear them. And I will see you guys next time in my video on Thursday. Okay, bye guys. Okay guys, <laughs> there is my 40 week belly. Oh my gosh, that's a very big belly. <sighs> Alrighty. Okay, bye guys. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world.